Welcome to the eighth match of the 2019 High Q season, co-sponsored by New Horizons Credit Union and the Mobile County Public School System. Hi everyone, I'm Bob Grip. I'm your quiz master for High Q. Today's match features teams from Davidson, St. Luke's, and the home team, BC Rain. The questions you're going to hear this morning are prepared in 16 categories by educators throughout the country who are all experts in their fields. They try to make these questions equally challenging. Now here's how the points are awarded. In a regular category, each team will have its own question in that area. The team will then have 15 seconds and four opportunities to answer. A correct answer on the first try is worth four points. Each time an incorrect answer is given, it's worth one less point. And if a team misses it entirely, either of the other two teams up here can gain one point with a correct answer, and I'll explain some of the other scoring variations as we go on. We always start with questions in current events. We always start with the home team. So BC Rain, everybody, good luck. Score as many points as you can. BC Rain, here's your question. Give the rough weight in tons of the Antarctic ice lost each year since 2009. Four tons. Try again. Three tons. Try again. Seven tons. Try again. Fifteen tons. Nope. Davidson buzzed in. 30,000. No. St. Luke's. 2.9 million. 250 billion tons. A lot of weight. St. Luke's, your question. Give me the last name of the GOP nominee for Attorney General of the United States. Parr. Right. Very good. Four points. Davidson, your current events question now. House Republicans voted not to seat this Iowa representative on House committees after he wondered aloud why white supremacy is offensive. He has a history of anti-immigrant and anti-minority remarks. Give me his last name. King. That's right, four points. King. <laughs> Topic now is American history to BC Rain. Esteemed as a general by John Brown, this person helped slaves escape to Canada, served as a Union spy, and helped educate freed slaves in North Carolina. Give me the full name of this person. George Williams. Try again. Jonathan Thrash. Try again. St. Luke's. Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman is correct. One point. St. Luke's. James K. Polk was considered a surprise nomination in 1844. Polk is thus America's first candidate of this type. Name this type of candidate. Independent. Try again. Hey, Davidson. Third party. No. BC Rain. Dependent. No. Dark Horse. A Dark Horse candidate. Davidson, your question. The cotton gin increased the cultivation of cotton and therefore increased the demand for slaves in the South. Give me the last name of the person who invented the cotton gin in 1793. Whitney. Whitney. Eli Whitney is right. Four points for Davidson. <laughs> Our home team now, question in biology. Name the principle that states that no two species with the same niche can coexist indefinitely. The Harmingen principle. Try again. Harriman thesis. Nope. Let's see, Davidson? The competitive exclusion principle? That's right, competitive exclusion. Very good, one point. All right, St. Luke's. Identify the name of similar species that avoid competition by living in different portions of a habitat or by using different food or other resources. One warbler species that feeds at the top of spruce trees 
while a second warbler species feeds at the bottom of spruce trees is an example. Coexistent. Try again. Davidson. Cohabitant. No. BC Rain. No. They're called sympatric. Sympatric. Davidson. Identify the kind of symbiotic relationship in which both participating species benefit. An example is ants herding aphids to gain food produced by the aphids while the aphids are protected by the ants. Mutualism? Yes, mutualism is right, four points. All right, time for our first toss-up of the match. It's in sports. The team's hands on your buzzers. First team to push its buzzer answers first, and four points for a correct answer. This golfer birdied the first hole of sudden death to defeat Justin Rose in the 2017 Masters Championship in Augusta, Georgia. It was his first championship in 74 attempts. Give me the last name of this golfer. BC Rain. What? No, sorry. St. Luke's or Davidson? Davidson. Watson. No. St. Luke's. Spieth. No, it was Sergio Garcia. Garcia was what we needed. No points. All right, time for literature questions. Back to our home team. In William Saroyan's short story titled The Daring Young Man on the Flying Trapeze, the man in the story decides he would like to read two books before he dies. One book is Shakespeare's play Hamlet. Give the name of the other book. Five seconds. Ortelia. Try again. King Henry IV. No, Davidson. Huckleberry Finn. Huckleberry Finn is right. One point for Davidson. <laughs> St. Luke. In Tony Cade Bambera's short story titled Gorilla My Love, Hazel doesn't like sitting in the back seat of her grandfather's truck next to buckets full of a specific kind of nut. Identify this time of type of nut. Uh, pecan. Right, pecans, right. Four points. <laughs> Davidson, in Louis L'Amour's short story titled Big Medicine, identify the animal Billy killed and made a hat from while he searched for gold in Apache territory. A rabbit. Try again. A hare. Try again. A deer. Try again. Coyote. Nope. Teams, wait for the buzzer if you'd like to answer. St. Luke's. Raccoon. No. BC Rain. A skunk. A wolf. A wolf is the answer we needed. No points. All right. Time for a question in math. We change the rules a little bit in math. 60 seconds for the time period, and teams get a copy of every question for possible bonus points. So. First math question is exclusively BC Rain, so everyone open your yellow math envelopes, please. In trapezoid ABCD, AB is parallel to CD. AB is 11 centimeters long, CD is 15 centimeters long. If the area of the trapezoid is 52 square centimeters, what is the distance in centimeters between AB and CD? Thirty seconds left for BC Rain. Twenty six. Try again. Thirteen. Try again. Twelve. Try again. Thirty four. Nope. Davidson was first. Four. Four is correct. One point for Davidson. 
Our next geometry question goes to St. Luke, so everyone open your red math envelopes. Instructions for Weed Be Gone fertilizer state that 12 pi pounds of fertilizer would be needed to treat a circular lawn 36 feet in diameter. How many pounds of fertilizer are needed to treat a rectangular lawn 81 feet by 40 feet? Thirty seconds left for St. Luke's. One twenty pi pounds. Try again. One hundred and twenty pounds. That's right. Three points. One hundred twenty pounds. All right, Davidson, this is your math question. Everyone open your blue math envelopes. A pendulum 15 inches long swings through an arc of 72 degrees. How far in inches does the tip of the pendulum travel? Give your answer as a multiple of pi. Thirty seconds left for Davidson. Ten seconds. Six pi. Yes, four points. Time for some Shakespeare questions now. In Act Four of As You Like It, Oliver describes his rescue by Orlando. At first, Orlando had noticed only a ragged fellow sleeping under a tree. Then Orlando observed a dangerous animal threateningly close. Identify the first animal that threatened the life of Oliver. Lion. Try again. Bear. Try again. Wolf. Try again. Snake. Yes, one point. A snake. Very good. <laughs> Next question goes to St. Luke. In Act Four of Othello, Iago arranges for Othello to eavesdrop on a conversation he has with Cassio. Iago then questions Cassio about his relationship with another character. Name that character. Desdemona. Try again. Davidson. Bianca. Right. One point for Davidson. All right, Davidson, your Shakespeare question now. In Act Four of Henry the Fourth, Part One. Hotspur asks Vernon to estimate the combined number of King Henry's forces. Give Vernon's estimate in thousands. 30,000? That's right, four points. Good. All right, geography is the topic. The entirety of the Mediterranean Sea lies outside of the tropics. Ergo, it can never be described geographically as tropical. This means that no part of the Mediterranean Sea is between the Tropic of Capricorn and another tropic. Give me the name of this other parallel. The Tropic of Cancer. That's right, four points. Yeah, four. All right, St. Luke's. Sardines and tuna are two of the three major species of fish that are caught within the seas of the Mediterranean. The third species is particularly common in the waters surrounding Greece, 
and thus an important part of that country's economy. Name this fish species. Salmon. Try again. Cod. Try again. Davidson. Anchovies. Right, anchovies, one point. All right, Davidson. Italy owns the largest island in the Mediterranean Sea. This island is located just off the southwestern tip of mainland Italy. Name the island. Sicily. Sicily is right, four points. Okay, we're halfway through the competition right now. BC Rain has five points, St. Luke's has 12, Davidson is in the lead with 29 points. New Horizons Credit Union has been serving its members and the community since 1950. New Horizons Credit Union is a proud supporter of the arts, civic activities, local charities, and higher education, including sponsoring annual scholarship opportunities open to all high schools. Visit New Horizons online at newhcu.org to learn about upcoming supported events that help make this area a great place to live. New Horizons Credit Union, offering its members solutions for the real world. All right, we're going to start with some questions in chemistry in the second half. BC Rain, here's yours. Give the atomic number above which nuclei are no longer stable and will therefore undergo radioactive decay. Eighty-one. Try again. Seventy-six. Try again. Ninety-three. Try again. Nope. Uh, Davidson. Fifty. No. St. Luke's. Ninety-two. Eighty-three. Eighty-three is what we needed. St. Luke's. Give the term used to describe the sum of the atomic masses of the atoms in the formula of a molecule. The molar mass? Try again. Davidson. Atomic mass? No. BC Rain. The only answer I could accept, molecular mass. Molecular mass. Davidson, state the last name of the chemist who showed that the amounts of substances released at the electrodes during electrolysis are related to the total charge that has flowed in the electric circuit. Rutherford. Try again. Einstein. No. Nope. B.C. Rain. Dalton. No, sorry. St. Luke's. Thompson. No. Nope. Michael Faraday. Art history. Back to our home team. This large glass and metal pyramid, surrounded by three smaller pyramids, stands at the entrance to the Louvre Museum and has become a landmark in Paris. Give me the name of the great modernist American architect born in China who designed these famous structures. Five seconds. Hung Lee. Try again. Davidson. Pei. Right, I am Pei. One point for Davidson. <laughs> St. Luke's. The style of the concrete poets can clearly be seen in this 1968 artwork, which contains one word that is printed 14 times in three columns on the canvas leaving one single word size space empty, creating a visual gap between the columns of words. Give the German word that is repeated in print in this work by Eugene Gomringer. Schweiger. Right, very good, four points. In English it means silence. Davidson. This artist was attracted to the sign painting direction of art informal and spent time studying oriental calligraphy, calligraphy and brushwork in a monastery. Following a trip to China and Japan, he produced his white writing, a, si a form of sign drawing in short brushstrokes that interlink and overlap in tight rhythm, 
Creating areas that are dense in spiritual and physical energy is seen in his work titled Edge of August. Give me the last name of this artist. Toby. Toby. Mark Toby's right. Four points. All right, now we change the rules once again to ask some questions in team choice. Now, before the match began, each team chose the topic it wanted to be quizzed on. Four points for a correct answer. But in team choice, there's only one answer per team. So teams, if I rule the original team's answer wrong, you can buzz in immediately and then get two points for a correct answer instead of one. BC Brain, you chose Shakespeare. Act four, scene three of The Winter's Tale begins with a song. Name the character who sings it. Barbary. Sorry. Davidson. Desdemona. What was it again? Desdemona. No, sorry. St. Luke's. Perdita. No, Autolycus. No points on that. St. Luke's, you chose geography. The most populous country in northern Africa lies along the continent's northeastern coastline with the Mediterranean Sea. It contains one of the cradles of civilization, the Nile River, which spills into the sea. Name this country. Egypt. Right, four points. Egypt. <laughs> Topic is literature. That's what Davidson wanted. One answer. In William Saroyan's short story titled The Daring Young Man on the Flying Trapeze, the narrator is also the central male character. Tell the total amount of money this man received when he sold his best suit. Two dollars. Two dollars is right. Four points. Now our next toss-up of the match, it's in American history, so everybody, hands on your buzzers, please. Perhaps the greatest of black abolitionists was discovered by abolitionists in Massachusetts in 1841, where he gave a stunning anti-slavery speech. Having escaped slavery at the age of 21, he eventually, St. Luke's. Douglas. I'll continue. He eventually wrote an iconic autobiography which propelled the anti-slave movement through the 19th century. Give me the full name of this abolitionist, Davidson. Wendell Phillips. What was it again? Wendell Phillips. No, BC Brain. No answer. Frederick Douglass. I needed the full name, Frederick Douglass. All right, physics is the topic. State the name given to the state of motion whereby an object is moving under only the influence of gravity. Inertia. Try again. <coughs> Kinetic energy. Try again. Gravitational force. Try again. Davidson. Free fall. Free fall is right. One point for Davidson. St. Luke's. The amount of kinetic energy an object possesses depends on its mass and one other variable. Name the other variable that determines the amount of kinetic energy an object possesses. Speed? Yes, four points, right, speed. Very good. Davidson. Name the physical quantity determined by the product of moment of inertia and angular velocity. Torque. Try again. The radius. Nope. Okay, BC Rain or St. Luke's? St. Luke's. Moment force? No. BC Rain. No, it's angular momentum is what we needed. Topic is American government. Back to BC Rain. In 1977, President Jimmy Carter granted amnesty to all of those who evaded the draft during this war. Give me the name of this war. The Vietnam War. That's right, four points. St. Luke's, by April 15th of any given year, everyone who earned taxable income in the preceding year must file one of these. 
Give the term for the forms that must be filed by April 15th each year. A W-2. Try again. Income tax form. Try again. Okay, Davidson. W-4. No. BC Rain. Tax return. Yes, tax return. Question to Davidson. Most of the president's major steps in foreign affairs are taken, are supposed to be taken in close consultation with this council. Give the name of the council that advises the president on all domestic, foreign, and military matters. National Security Council. That's right, four points. Back to our home team now with a question in world history. An organization known as the WTO has as its stated purpose to help trade flow smoothly, freely, fairly, and predictably. Most of the nations of the world belong to the WTO, and these nations represent 97% of global trade. Give the name for which the initials WTO stand. World Trade Organization. Right, four points. <laughs> St. Luke's. The first president of Kenya spent nearly 10 years in prison for his efforts to promote independence from the British. When independence was finally granted, he, like many other leaders of African independence movements, remained president for the rest of his life. Give me the last name of this Kenyan nationalist leader. Nkrumah. Try again. Nagami. Try again. Davidson. Kenyatta. Right. Jomo Kenyatta was his name. Very good. <laughs> Davidson. In 1959, the Afrikaner government of South Africa set aside regions of the country where blacks were required to live unless they were servants in the homes of whites. These regions were poor and isolated leaving all the best land to the white minority. Give the term used to describe these regions in which most blacks in South Africa were required to live. A ghetto. Try again. Apartheid. Try again. Okay, BC Rain or St. Luke's, anybody? No, it was called the homelands, forced to live in the homelands. All right, we're down to the last question in today's contest. It's a four-point toss-up. Teams, open your white math envelopes now. For what value or values of k is x plus 4 a factor of x squared plus kx minus 12? Hey, St. Luke's. One. One is right, four points. Very good. All right, our final score today would be BC Rain 14, St. Luke's 28. Today's winner, Davidson, with 44 points. Congratulations to everybody.